You know, the price of gold today is uh, $1,580. The dollar during these last three years was devalued almost 50%. When you wake up in the morning, do you care about the price of gold? Well, I pay attention to the price of gold, but I think it reflects a lot of things. It reflects uh, global uncertainties. I think people are, the reason people hold gold is as a protection against what we call tail risk, really, really bad outcomes. And to the extent that the last few years have made people more worried about potential of a major crisis, then they have gold as a protection. Do you, th do you think gold is money? No. It's not money. It's Even a, it's if it has been metal. money for 6,000 years, somebody reversed that and eliminated that economic law. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's an asset. I mean, it's the same. Would you say treasury bills are money? I don't think they're money well, either, do, but they're a financial do, why asset. Why do central banks hold it? Well, it's, it's the former money. reserves. It's why don't they hold diamonds? Well, it's tradition, long-term <laughs> tradition. Well, some people still think it's money.
what is that doing in my hand? I remember this. I do remember this. This is. Do you have a couple of minutes for us, Mr. Rush? I was going to ask you a question. I was going to ask you a question on the side of the saying that the Federal Reserve is one of these organizations. It's one of these organizations that a lot of people say is the source of human made products all across the world because it's a private bank. That was started by your family. No, no, it's completely not true. I was asked that earlier. It really isn't true. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just one thing. We could go on about how, you know, your family committed all these acts against society, but we just want to let you know the New World Order has no legitimacy. And that we as a people are not afraid, and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banks who are looting this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well... I'm doing it. Uh, the land was being used by uh, sheep uh, farmers, and they didn't want their land to be removed from uh, their use. <laughs> So that he was very much criticized, but he spent 20 years and finally acquired most of the land, buying it in, in small bits, uh, and then gave it to the government. A country that builds underground nuclear facilities, that develops intercontinental ballistic missiles, that manufactures thousands of centrifuges, and that absorbs crippling sanctions, is doing all that in order to advance medical science. So you see, when, uh, when that Iranian ICBM is flying through the air to a location near you, you've got nothing to worry about. It's only carrying medical isotopes. Ladies and gentlemen, if it looks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, then what is it? What is it? That's right. It's a duck. But this duck is a nuclear duck. And it's time the world started calling a duck a duck. You need early screening. You need to be tested. You need to have all kinds of shots. You need to have all kinds of shots. You need to have all kinds of shots. Uh, since the topic is tomorrow, I think I would say a few words about yesterday, a few words about today, and a few words about tomorrow. So if you, if you look back uh, in, in, in very brief words at what happened uh, when this whole crisis started, it started by an unprecedented drama in the financial world, as you know. A large number of banks, and to a lesser extent insurance company, went into very serious trouble. A big bank went bankrupt. Others became candidate to forced mergers. And quite a lot of banks were saved uh, by government support. Effectively, my generation, um, I, I, um, Indra and Noah and, and his generation are an extremely early middle age, from what I can see. <laughs> so, so maybe, maybe even, uh, maybe even, you know, advanced youth, you might say. But, uh, um, but, um, but uh, certainly, there's another generation ahead of uh, equally as talented people. Israel, Mr. President, because of the cautiousness of the bankers and the talent of the supervisor, it obviously better than most. I think that unless you're 100 years old and still in activity, one can say that nobody in activity has seen a crisis of this magnitude, and one should never forget this. The financial industry came very close to a collapse and was saved by remarkable action 
put in place by central bankers who provided liquidity in a variety of sophisticated forms uh, to, the, to the banking industry and by governments. Governments obviously had to intervene in various forms, guaranteeing assets, buying assets, and taking stakes in many banks. This whole thing started in the summer uh, of 2007, and I remember in London seeing the interbank market close uh, almost within a night, uh, which m meant that for those who are not bankers, the liquidity uh, that banks used to lend to one another suddenly disappear. Have banks recovered? I turn toward, look to the governors. I think one can say globally, yes. Some remain fragile, but I think the situation of banks has, is vastly improved, or has vastly improved. Then the financial crisis was followed uh, by a worldwide recession. And in this recession, although again some countries did much better than others, one can say that there was no decoupling. Everyone took a bit of the pain, some more than others. As you know, in a recession, you have at least two quarters. In this particular case, we had more than two quarters of negative output. We had a big uh, drop in value of assets. Uh, we had a drop in corporate earnings. We saw massive destocking, massive deleveraging at the corporate level, and of course, massive deleveraging at the consumer, which means that the consumers stopped borrowing and started to rebuild their savings. And of course, when consumers uh, rebuild savings and stop borrowing, it fuels recession, particularly in countries like the US, 
where the share of GDP coming from consumer spending is very high, and therefore, of course, you can't come back to a more healthy situation and expect to keep economic dynamism. Of course, many jobs were lost, but again, one could have, one could have gone into a severe deflation, which is a tragedy. Everyone has seen how complicated it is. Japan is a good case. When you start to be in a deflation, how you move out of it is extremely difficult. Deflation, again, was avoided by the fact that governments, central banks, in a very concerted and, and, and swift and intelligent reaction, uh, put in place a number of stimulus packages which prevented this recession to transform itself into a major deflation. Now, where are we today? Today, stock markets have, as you know, recovered. There's been a great rally, particularly in the last three months. The question then is, this recovery, is it reflective completely or only partially uh, of the situation of the real economy? And I think it is only partially reflective of the situation of the real economy. There is new equity available, i.e. fresh money, uh, for people who want to raise money, subject to, you know, the story uh, making sense. Bond markets have reopened, and that segment is, 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 extremely, is extremely active. Credit spreads have improved, and corporate earnings seem to have stabilized. So, there are some clearly positive aspects today. But, unemployment is still 
increasing and I believe that no one can talk of a final recovery while people are still losing their jobs. I think we need a, a one world government, uh, a scientific dictatorship. I haven't heard that we do. You haven't heard that we do? Ah, oh, come, come, Mr. Rothschild. There are many people out there that disagree with uh, your family's uh, eugenics views. You don't have eugenics views. Well, I don't expect you to admit that, but... Um, I'm not here to confront you. I'd just really like to know your views on that. The cabin is green. We then decided to write the most amazing nonsense about us being your mother planet. About us being your mother planet. Your mother planet. Your mother planet. Business, and particularly in the financial and the banking sector, will not remember what happened. Obviously, banks will have to follow new rules put in place by regulators. But the question is, Will all this happen because we are forced, as a, an industry already very regulated, to do things new because regulators have asked us to do things new? Or will they be a sort of voluntary change in behavior? And to put it in very simple terms, uh, you know, will people understand that more transparency is needed when it comes to bank, less complexity? maybe a better quality earnings than just a quantity of earnings and of course accountability I leave the legal side apart moral accountability uh, on the part of senior management uh, when it comes to running institutions like that
my fellow humans, this is Benjamin Fulford speaking on April 11th, 2012. This is just a short announcement to let people know that the time for talking is over. We need to take action. Everybody must do what they personally can. These satanic cabalists do not intend to leave quietly. We have to start arresting them, removing them from positions of power, and it has started and it will continue. We will not give specific dates, but it will happen. It is starting. It is, there's a lot we cannot say, but the time for talking is over. We need action. Everybody must do what they personally can. Thank you.